This round is a stand-up challenge. I launched a wheel of news and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Interviews. Who wants to come in on that? OK. Matt. Go for that. It's fascinating watching different politicians and how they deal with interviews. Uh, Ed Miliband, when he gets asked a question he doesn't like, will just have this amazing technique where he'll just ask himself a new question and answer that instead. <laughs> and it really works. He got asked before the election by Nick Robinson. Uh, Mr Miliband, you've said you'll set a new mansion tax if you become Prime Minister, but you won't yet tell us at what rate you would set it. And Miliband just went, look, Nick, if you're asking me, have I got a plan for the housing market, then the answer's yes. <laughs> amazing. Farage is one of the best ones at it, cos no matter what you ask him, he'll get a political answer in some way. You could say, Nigel, uh, what have you had for breakfast, mate? And he'd go, tea, toast and the telegraph, great British breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> he always manages to get his messages across. Boris Johnson is fascinating because he just loves avoiding questions and he uses a twin-track approach of flattery and Latin. <laughs> and this genuinely works. If he was here now, you could say, Boris, come on, just a minute. You want to be Prime Minister? And he goes, oh, no, 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 let me just say, you know, great to be here amongst such great learned people on this crucible of culture. Reminds me uh, very much of a, a phrase my father used to use, you know, divitas, uh, divitum, uh, rectum. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Matt. Very good. OK, so James is left. Let's see what he's been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is Britain. I wish I was Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> love everything about... I love Mexican food. My favourite place to eat is a uh, Mexican restaurant called Oaxaca. Uh, all, all you need to know about Oaxaca, everyone steals their spoons. Uh, so much so that every January, Oaxaca have a spoon amnesty on. <laughs> you bring back one of the stolen spoons and then they reward you with free tacos. Genius. <laughs> Not only did they get their spoons back, they also get to watch while the thieves eat tacos, which I imagine have been interfered with beyond belief. <laughs> <laughs> love Mexican food, love Mexican music. Mariachi music, best music in the world. Top three mariachi songs. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number three, nothing, because there are no other mariachi songs. <laughs> Ever been to a mariachi nightclub? It's full of people just going up to the DJ, like, hey man, have you got da 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 Growing up in school, I was the only kid in my whole school who liked mariachi music. It was a nightmare. I couldn't walk down the corridor without some knob knocking my sombrero off my head. <laughs> Step on the back of my poncho on the way in a maths class. <laughs> Once, a kid wrote chimichanga bum boy across my forehead <laughs> while I was having my post-lunch siesta. <laughs> he also drew a moustache on my face, but to be fair, that played into my hands. <laughs> Bravo, very good. It's close, but for sticking to the topic, James Acaster gets the points. Well done to both of you. Come on back. And the first subject is relationships. Ellie. So, I've got quite a close relationship with my sister, and um, she's got my little nephew, Henry, who is um, a prick. Um... <laughs> No, he is. Don't take his side. You haven't met him. Um, because before he came along, I was the youngest in the family. I was the baby of the family, which we all know is the socially acceptable way for saying favourite. <laughs> A role I was born to play until my sister, Slaggy McSlaggerson, <laughs> got herself knocked up by some dude she had barely been married to for six years. <laughs> Suddenly, it was all about her and the baby within. Now, initially, naively, I did actually get quite excited about the pregnancy. Because I think, especially from, like, a female point of view, you wouldn't be human if you didn't get excited about your sister putting on a lot of weight. <laughs> <laughs> Had a lot of fun with that. Um, we did. I changed her ringtone to the sound of a large lorry reversing. <laughs> 
such a sisterly banter, really. Um, but the banter stopped when the baby came because suddenly it was all about him. No one paid me any attention anymore. Like, I don't know if you've ever, ever had like um, sort of a family dinner with a small child around. It's a nightmare. There's food being thrown, there's shit everywhere, there's tits hanging out. <laughs> you name it, I tried it, still nothing. <laughs> Thank you. And there you go there. Very good. Okay, that leaves us with Milton. Let's see what you've been given. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is entertainment. <laughs> I'm reading a book at the moment. It's called The Anticlimax. The first part is good. <laughs> <laughs> I see Rihanna had to cancel a concert because she got salmonella. Ella, Ella. <laughs> I also see that down by the Thames they're making another wheel, this time dedicated to Mary Poppins, called the London Um Diddle 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 Um Diddle Eye. <laughs> <laughs> My grandmother, she got her scarf caught in one of those Ferris wheels, uh, but she did regain consciousness. After all, what goes around. I was in a nativity play once. I was the man who scares the children because he comes into the hall on the wrong day to play badminton. <laughs> <laughs> Lionel Richie says hello, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> the other day I saw a sheep pole dancing uh, in a kebab shop. Thank you very, very much. OK. Get that round the point. Get it in the door. Oh, God. Let's go back. Parties. Who wants to come in that? James. I went to a surprise party recently for my friend Daryl. We were all in his living room, all of us, uh, in the dark, hiding. <laughs> his girlfriend turned to us all. She went, right, he's going to be here in a minute. When he gets in, everyone jump out, yell surprise. And that will be really surprising. <laughs> I argue it'd be a lot more surprising if, if instead of making all that commotion, we all just stood there in his living room in the dark, just... <laughs> <laughs> when he comes in and turns the lights on, see how surprised he is then? <laughs> it's a good party. I schmoozed. I'm good at schmoozing. Buttering people up. I'll give you some schmoozing tips, why not? A lot of people will tell you when you're schmoozing, have a good icebreaker, right? Break the ice. What they won't tell you, at the end of the conversation, unbreak the ice. <laughs> you don't want anyone else swooping in, taking advantage of all the lovely little ice cubes that you created. So freeze it over again before you leave. <laughs> so as you're leaving, just slide something under the fence, like death comes to us all, something like that. <laughs> So, Gary's left. Let's see what topic you have, Gary. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is childhood. I didn't know what to get my little niece for Christmas, so I asked my sister what she's into. And apparently, at the moment, she's mad about frozen stuff, so I got her some oven chips and peas. <laughs> <laughs> and they love that. <laughs> Every Christmas day, we'd always have pigs in blankets or as you probably call them, relatives sleeping in the spare room. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh, possibly the most vindictive chapter in Nelson Mandela's autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> it was only after I shot the fifth zombie that I started to wonder why they were all carrying bags of sweets and ringing my doorbell. <laughs> I've been trying to recapture my lost youth. You know, I really must get that cellar door fixed. <laughs> One time when I was a kid, I bought a chocolate bar. On the inside of the wrapper, it said, you're a loser. I wouldn't mind if there'd been some sort of competition on. <laughs> to make things worse, it was a boost. <laughs> As a family, we couldn't decide whether to have Nana buried or cremated, so in the end, we let her live. <laughs> 
<laughs> My 13-year-old cousin's already started taking heroin. It's amazing, isn't it? They shoot up so fast these days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. There you go. Pointing it out, I'm going to go to the lady. Everyone, come back. <laughs> and the first subject is Parenthood. Who wants to come in that? Ed. I've been thinking recently that I should maybe have a baby. But I've thought about it and definitely not. Couldn't handle that amount of responsibility. Something that precious, it's terrifying. You know, I've got friends who've just had a baby and they offer that thing around like a plate of biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to hold my baby? Do you want to hold my baby? I don't want to touch your baby. That is a heart in a bag. <laughs> I'm going nowhere near that thing. You wouldn't send the work experience into the boardroom, would you? Start me off with holding your uncle and I will work my way up. <laughs> This is Uncle Toby, 47, from Swansea. <laughs> Don't worry about dropping me, Ed. I am absolutely shit-faced. <laughs> still can't help it. I still think I might want a baby. Like, there's just moments in life I'm just grabbing at signs from the universe, think, oh, maybe I should have a baby. Something to me the other day, I was in the queue in a shop to buy a new light bulb. Uh, because I'm not a student anymore, my light bulb had gone, I'm not going to sit there in the dark for six months. <laughs> so I was in the queue, and in the queue in front of me was a man with a baby. Uh, he was a dad. You've got to give people the benefit of the doubt in that scenario. <laughs> Can't go storming in, going, excuse me, is that your baby? You've just got to admit, it probably is, right? And on the wall, uh, there were these light switches. They weren't real light switches, they were just, like, designer ones to show you what they would look like on the, on the wall. Uh, and the baby was playing with them, it was going, ah, da 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 playing with them, and the dad was going, yeah, try that one, and going, ah, da da I saw that, I thought, ooh, that's quite sweet. Maybe I want a baby. There's something in that tableau that I quite like. Maybe I want a baby. Am I broody? Is this brood? <laughs> and then the dad walked off with the baby, and I wandered over to the light switches, started playing with them. I thought, oh, no, that's what I wanted. <laughs> well, good, Ed. So that leaves us with Milton. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is transport. So I was on the bus the other day, driver stopped, got off, wouldn't come back. Apparently some bloke with big teeth kept talking to him. <laughs> <laughs> Before that, though, I overheard a mermaid on the bus. She said, I like sitting on the beach, but my other half likes swimming. <laughs> Anyway, reading between the lines is dangerous if you're waiting for a train. <laughs> anyway, I did a show in Liverpool recently, and afterwards a bloke came up to me and said, Hey, listen, I want to talk. I said, Well, just keep practicing. <laughs> Next month, I'm in Northern Ireland, county down, four, three, two... <laughs> I don't need a relationship, I am a rock. I am an island. Sometimes I go down to airport arrivals and I stand with a piece of cardboard saying, no one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did that until I had to give a lift to a Mr Noon. <laughs> well done. Give that round of applause for Ed Gamble. Magazines. Who wants to come in that? OK. Tip. As a woman, most of your life uh, is designed to make you feel a little bit shit. <laughs> and magazines are responsible for that. You know, magazines like OK, which I look at on the shelves and think, when are they going to stop putting people on the front of that who are quite clearly not OK? <laughs> um, magazines will recommend that you have plastic surgery. That seems to be everywhere. Too much plastic surgery these days. I think that's why they've invented emoticons. Right, they're for women who've had too much plastic surgery, so you can just hold up an iPad and say, I feel happy. <laughs> I feel sad. I feel like a smiley poo with eyes. <laughs> but, uh, I think the worst thing uh, that magazines do is they perpetuate trends, really bad trends, right? I don't know how you guys feel about vajazzling. <laughs> But I genuinely believe it is a plot by religious groups to get gay men interested in vaginas. <laughs> by making them look like disco balls. 
I told my mum about the vajazzling, right? I said, Mum, they do this thing now where they put Diamante on your downstairs. And my mum just went, vajazzling? In my day, you were lucky if you gave it a wash. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jeff. <laughs> OK, that leads us Ramesh. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is parenting. <laughs> I'm a parent. <laughs> you know, we, uh, we had our first child, and uh, our first child is such a lovely kid. You know, he always says please and thank you. He's such a wonderful wonderful little boy. I said to my wife, do you know what? I think we might have mastered parenting. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just about setting clear boundaries and being consistent. <laughs> <laughs> the second one, feral. Right. <laughs> like, I love him, but what a prick this kid is. Like, I love him, but what an unacceptable human being. Like, I love him, but I don't like him. You know, that's... <laughs> Look, I'm gonna have to say to him one day, you're a mistake. And not like in the way that the contraception went wrong, like the decision to have you was a mistake. <laughs> Sometimes I want him to get hurt. There you go, I said it, I said it, I said, now listen. I don't mean really hurt. I don't mean really hurt, I just mean a little bit. You know, because he doesn't listen, this kid. When I say to him, don't do that, dude, because if you do that, you're gonna get hurt. And then he does it and he doesn't get hurt. <laughs> that pisses me off, right? Because that is life telling him that I'm full of shit. This kid's running with scissors with no consequences. Do you know what I mean? Thank you very much, Ryan. Very good. Again, the points go to Tim Tim Come on back, both of you. And the topic is exercise. I know we need to do more exercise. I mean, we've now got the fattest kids in Europe. I'm not going to make fun out of obese children. I've learned not to do that. They will come down on you like a ton of bricks. <laughs> I didn't like exercising as a kid. When I was a kid, I was made to go swimming in, in a pool that had a Veruca pool before you got into it. The Veruca pool. Do you remember the Veruca pool? They actually called it the Veruca pool. <laughs> You can't encourage children to walk in something that's called a Veruca pool. It's like offering somebody the use of your chlamydia flannel, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, I try and exercise a bit more now. I've started doing yoga, cos apparently it increases your flexibility and spirituality. And I've got to be honest, it's pretty good. I'm now so good at the downward-facing dog, I have on occasion caught glimpses of my own third eye. <laughs> She did, I did a half marathon, though, uh, a, few, a few months ago, which was, it was pretty good, you know. I, I, don't be overly impressed, which you're clearly not, but... Um, <laughs> I only finished yesterday, so there's clearly a lot of work to be done. <laughs> and I, I, did it for, I, did, I did the run for charity, and I know a lot of people are doing things for charity. You can't just exercise now, can you? You've got to do it for a good cause, and I get a lot of those emails. I know we all do, you know, will you sponsor me? Will you sponsor me? I'm like, what are you doing? I'm flip-flopping up Kilimanjaro for diarrhoea. <laughs> going across the Arctic for trapped wind, are you? <laughs> Don't do that. I mean, the last London marathon, it cost me an absolute fortune, cos I sponsored loads of friends, right? I gave one friend 20 quid cos he was doing it for cancer research, another friend 20 quid cos he was doing it for heart disease, another one 20 quid cos he was doing it for diabetes. In the end, it was actually cheaper for me to join Booper. <laughs> <laughs> OK, that leaves us with Milton. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And the subject is work. <laughs> I didn't think I'd get a loan from the bank for my knitting business, but when I turned up actually wearing one of the balaclavas... <laughs> I used to be a weatherman. In fact, does anyone want to buy a broken barometer? <laughs> No pressure. <laughs> if there'd been a mix-up, my uncle could have ended up as the next president of the United States. He's an undertaker in the army, or Barack Obama. <laughs> Soldiers, of course, very emotionally repressed. Sometimes you see one of them go into the middle of a parade ground and shout, Attention! <laughs> <laughs> 
what he needs is a hug. <laughs> well, that's what I thought. <laughs> My dad, he was a soldier, so, of course, as a family, we were always moving around a lot, because uh, he used to use us for target practice. <laughs> Six hours I had to wait in the other day for the electrician until he opened the cupboard under the stairs and I was able to leap out at him. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I was a policeman, I was asked to seal off an area and I went... <laughs> That's all right, thank you. Hey, uh, well done. Point there for Linda Jones. Come on back. First topic is health. I uh, had to have my penis looked at <laughs> uh, by a doctor. I didn't just <laughs> wake up one morning and go, oh, more people should be looking at this, quite frankly. <laughs> just spend an hour a day at my bedroom window with it pressed up against the glass. Um, <laughs> It was a scary experience having to go to the doctors. I thought I should build up the courage to get down there and have it looked at. Well, I went in there, my courage flew out the window like a little bird. Because as soon as I went in there, I found out that the doctor who I had an appointment with was a lady doctor. Uh, now, I obviously don't have a problem with ladies being doctors. In fact, give them the vote, that's what I say. <laughs> but there is a worry if there's a lady poking around down there. In that context, what if your nethers decide... Ooh. <laughs> I think it's time to go to work. <laughs> Luckily, then, I remembered I'm not an Alsatian whose lipstick pops out at the slightest whiff of an undercarriage. <laughs> I needn't have worried, cos she was a good doctor, she was a great doctor. She put me at ease straight away using one word. This is what she said. She said, OK, Mr Gamble, just go behind that curtain there and pop it out for me. There's the word, pop. <laughs> now, pop is a lovely word. As soon as I heard that word, I knew everything was going to be fine, because she was not expecting anything big in that area at all. Because <laughs> the word pop is reserved for very small things. No one has ever said, come in, help me pop the elephant in the van, have they? <laughs> so I was relaxed. Better than me going in there and her saying, OK, just heave yourself out your trousers, woman. <laughs> just haul yourself out the front of your trues. Just swing yourself over in my direction. <laughs> Maybe I can bring out this Shire horse and he can drag your junk over towards <laughs> my work station. Or open this corner cupboard and bring out a team of pantomime dwarves who can shoulder your meat <laughs> and waddle it over towards me like pallbearers at a weird circus cock funeral. <laughs> Thank you. And job. Uh... OK, that leaves us with Rob. Let's see what we've been left with for a topic. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is growing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, uh, I've had a big year. I've been growing up, uh, got married. <laughs> um, uh, Anna Lipova as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's like it. It's exciting. Um, she's pretty happy about the marriage, though. Um, she's, yeah, she's got a passport now, so... <laughs> But, I do, but it's weird though, like when you're getting, like you grow up and you get like your friends all getting couples and stuff like that, you have to, they always go like, why don't we do Come Dine With Me? No. <laughs> if we're going to do a television programme, let's do Total Wipeout. <laughs> it's much more fun, isn't it? I don't want to just cook more. <laughs> and it's weird though, because my mum did different things when she was growing up. She used to do Tupperware parties. And these don't exist. This is where groups of grown women used to buy and sell lumps of plastic. Like, what, kind of, what kind of night in that? <laughs> Like, the only thing that ever got bought at a Tupperware party was a big bowl, going to be used for salads in the summer, just turned into the house sick bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got one of these horrible bowls in their house. It's a bowl you keep in your house that every member of your family's been sick in at least once. <laughs> what kind of life's that for the bowl? <laughs> He's at the Tupperware party, I'm a big bowl, going to see some salads in my time. No, mate, sick for Ella. <laughs> Um, the thing is, as well, like, I used to come home from the pub, not even going to be sick, just a bit, just a bit pissed, and Mum goes, get in the sick bowl, you need the sick bowl. Get in... I don't need the sick bowl, Mum. But I get the bowl, I look in it, get flashbacks, I'm sick everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's been three generations of sick in that bowl. <laughs> it's the closest thing you've got to an heirloom. <laughs> well done, very good. Well done, both of you. Points for both Rob and Ed. Come on back. The first subject is leadership. 
Uh, leadership looks fun, but it's stressful. Just look at anyone leading a conga. <laughs> On the outside, it looks brilliant. They're having a great time all the time. Just. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you bloody are. Yes, you bloody are. <laughs> In their heads, just going, I don't know where I'm going. I, don't know. <laughs> I didn't plan a route. I never asked for any of this. <laughs> God, I miss my family. <laughs> Everyone's trapped in the conga. <laughs> you think you can leave? You can't leave. Person at the back, maybe, they can let go and make a run for it. Everyone else, you let go. You're not out the conga. Now you're the leader of a rival conga. <laughs> You've got turf wars to worry about. <laughs> Worst case scenario, you're second from the back, you let go. The one person behind you loves congas, isn't giving up for anyone. <laughs> and trying to mingle at the party with a maniac on your hips. <laughs> Never serious discussion about the Lib Dem conference, they're still going hell for leather. <laughs> You'd have to go swimming just to get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> Never gonna lead a conga. Never gonna lead a free cheers either. I don't know who these lunatics are. I don't know where you acquire that level of confidence. Just get up in a room full of people. Three cheers for Jackie! Hip, hip! What if everyone goes, no? <laughs> Not three cheers for Jackie, she's an unpleasant person. <laughs> How about no cheers for Jackie? Hip, hip, shut up. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jackie. Okay, that leaves us with Gary. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. Okay, the topic is health. Where you go? I'm a lot sportier than I might look. In fact, I picked up a little niggle at the gym the other day. I mean, he pronounces it Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> I had a very stressful journey getting here today. All the way, this lorry driver was right up my ass, but it was nice of him to give me a lift. <laughs> no, I spent most of the afternoon hanging out at the swimming baths. And then somebody told me, and I tucked it back in again. <laughs> <laughs> I put on a lot of weight recently, so I rang up Weight Watchers. I said, it's an emergency. Can you send somebody round? And they said, yes, we can. We got loads of those. <laughs> My grief counsellor died recently, but luckily he was so good I didn't give a shit. <laughs> accidentally kicked the dog earlier and he bit me on the bollocks. My mate said, it's karma. I said, no. If anything, he's even more angry. <laughs> I asked the vet, what can I do? I think my dog's racist. He keeps barking at the Asian man next door. And the vet said, muzzle him. I said, I don't know, but he's got a beard. <laughs> I went round to see my nan. I said, what you been up to? She said, weed in the garden. I said, well, at least you didn't shit in it. <laughs> I was in the garden with my girlfriend earlier and we saw the 18-year-old girl next door all doled up, ready to go out clubbing, and my girlfriend said, do you know what? At that age, I could really see myself in her. Which was weird, cos I was thinking the exact same. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Well done, guys. Very point there for a baby! Come on. And the first topic is relationships. Ed. So I've just moved in with my girlfriend. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Cheers, thanks for the support, Mum. That's good of you. Uh, uh, it's good, it's exciting. The first time I've lived with a girl, obviously we're finding out a lot more about each other that we didn't know before. Uh, what I found out about her is she's kinder, funnier, more sensitive than I ever realised. What we've both found out about me is I am a terrible, terrible prick and so difficult to live with. Because <laughs> uh, it turns out I am a tidy person. I didn't realise. I thought I was normal. But apparently, it is not normal to have a favourite J-cloth. <laughs> she is a messy, messy lady. She is unbelievable. She laid back, no worries. She says that a lot. No, who has no worries? Are you dead? Are you a robot? What's wrong with you? <laughs> you should wake up, worry, go to bed. That is a full day, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> she genuinely said this out loud the other day. Hakuna Matata. <laughs> I'm starting to think the actual Swahili translation of that is doesn't hoover. Because <laughs> there is underwear everywhere. 
This is an odd side effect of living with a girl that I did not fully anticipate. I no longer find women's underwear sexually titillating in any way whatsoever. Because <laughs> I used to be able to just see underwear and that was enough to get me excited. Didn't have to be a woman in it. <laughs> just be a bra on the floor and I'd go, ooh, boobs were there. That's... <laughs> enough. Now, nothing like that. I see a pair of knickers now, it's just something the remote control might be under. <laughs> well done, Obama. Very good. That leaves us with Milton. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is medicine. <laughs> I have to go to the chemist soon to collect my prescription. Not from PC World, like last time. <laughs> Those tablets were very difficult to swallow. <laughs> Recently, I went to the chiropractors, or as they call them in the capital of Egypt, uh, the practors. <laughs> well, I put my back out trying to shoot horses, but it turns out the World Health Organization aren't trying to eradicate polo. <laughs> My dad was a doctor, my mum was a nurse, they had six children, we all left home early. Well, they needed the beds. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the birthday, I asked for that game, Operation. Three years I waited. <laughs> I was talking to a nurse the other day. She said the main problem facing the NHS is Holby City. <laughs> Actually, she might have said obesity. <laughs> well done. In that hand, boys go to Ed Campbell. Right in the back. The first subject is technology. Who has come in that? Josh. Uh, I, I don't want to brag, but um, I've got a new debit card. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've won the older uh, touchy down here. If you haven't got one of these, you have not lived, my friends. <laughs> oh, my God, never did you feel so smug in your life. Well, when they go, how would you like to pay? Just have, mate, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> what am I off? The future. <laughs> Thing is, you get used to it, you can't go back, you're going somewhere now. Well, they haven't got the technology, do you want to just put in your PIN number? Are you kidding me? <laughs> do you expect me to stand here for four seconds, <laughs> pushing buttons? What is this, a Victorian workhouse? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Marks and Spencers, no! I'll be getting my Percy pigs elsewhere in future! <laughs> the worst is when you think they have the touchdown technology, but they haven't. You look like you've never used a debit card... <laughs> ..before in your life! How do you like to pay? You're just going... <laughs> Are you having a breakdown? <laughs> I don't like it when they've got the terminal and they have to ask for your permission. Do you mind if I just... Yeah, I couldn't give a shit, mate. Just... <laughs> what, what, yeah, just in case he goes, do you mind if I just... Yeah, £4,000 unlucky, my friend. <laughs> Enjoy your Sprite. <laughs> it's the opposite of the other one I don't like, which is when the waiter makes too much of not looking at your PIN number. Hey, if you'd just like to put in your PIN number. Well, I wasn't suspicious of you until now. <laughs> Thank you very much, Josh. OK, that leaves us with James. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And the subject is food. I'm trying to eat more healthily lately. I've, uh, I bought some ready-to-eat apricots this week. <laughs> they say you are what you eat. Which is true, cos as soon as I bought the ready-to-eat apricots, I was ready-to-eat apricots. <laughs> <laughs> Those ready-to-eat apricots, they came in a resealable bag as well, cos not everyone's as ready-to-eat apricots as they think they are. <laughs> Maybe next time they'll buy ready-to-eat some apricots. <laughs> I know shitloads about bread. <laughs> There's no such thing as prawn bread. <laughs> so the origin of prawn toast remains a mystery. 
favourite place to eat is Pret a Manger. Uh, if you don't know Pret a Manger, it's an authentic French restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> so much in there, so much to manger. <laughs> I love manger in there. <laughs> I think my favourite thing to manger is the yogurts. I love to manger the yogurts. So, uh, You've got granola on top, then mainly yoghurt, then like fruit compote at the bottom. It's like the way they eat it in Paris and <laughs> get a spoon and mix it all together and then you mange it that way. If you like, or if you like, just leave it as it is, don't mix it and just work your way down in order. Like start off with nothing but granola to begin with, just shoveling raw granola in your mouth, just <laughs> deflecting off your teeth, then power through the yoghurt for a really long time, getting absolutely nothing out of it. Then <laughs> end on the tangy compote, like, whoa, what a finale! Ah, oh, that's all. <laughs> So I eat yogurt, I eat them like they're packaged. That's why I like them fruit corners. They come with that little chaser. <laughs> Thank you very much. At the end of that round, the points go to James Acaster. <laughs> and the first topic is home life. Nate. Yeah, I could talk about home life. Um, I, uh, I still live at home with my mum still. Thanks for the judgmental silence. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I live at home. Um, my, my mate's giving the most stick for it, because I'm the last one in my group of friends who still lives at home uh, with my mum. They've all moved out, so they see me as a mummy's boy. And every time they see me, they're like, Nathan, what's wrong with you, man? Why are you still at your mum's, man? Are you embarrassed? Why are you still at your mum's? Why are you still at your mum's? It's like, I live in West London. Have you seen house prices? I'm not going anywhere, man. <laughs> if anything, I'm looking at my mum thinking, when are you going to bloody leave? <laughs> Cleaning on, let it go, woman. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna slap the black off me when she sees this. <laughs> so, yeah, I like peace and quiet. Although, to be honest, at home, I, I'm not getting a lot of peace and quiet at the moment, uh, mainly because of my mum and my stepdad. Uh, they got married quite recently. And um, I'm happy for my mum. You know, she's found happiness. She deserves it. However, at the moment, they're going through um, that whole that, that honeymoon phase where they're having sex all the time. <laughs> yeah, it is bloody disturbing, man. Because <laughs> uh, my bedroom is, like, right next door. So, like, every time they do it, I hear everything. Like, um, a few Saturdays ago, right, it's late at night. I'm about to go to sleep. From next door, I can hear my stepdad going, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, lad, oh, lad. Say something nasty, say something nasty, say something nasty. <laughs> So I screamed out, you're not my real dad! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Jason Gaten. OK, that leaves us with Ed. Let's see what topic you've been left with. And the topic is diet. <laughs> I hope this isn't just a hint that I need to lose weight. Uh, <laughs> Because uh, I've, I've lost quite a lot of weight recently. Uh, anyway, I've lost uh, about six stone in the last uh, three years. Cheers, guys. Thanks. I mean, no. <laughs> Too late. You went with the British reaction. Thank you very much. Just <laughs> couldn't give a shit, mate. Carry on. We don't... <laughs> stop showing off. We don't want to hear about it. <laughs> Found myself in a bit of a nightmare situation recently. Uh, I went to the Middle East to do some gigs. Uh, now, that bit was nice. That was lovely. But they put you up in a hotel where the food is all-you-can-eat buffets three times a day for ten days. Now, this is a nightmare scenario for me because I cannot be trusted at an all-you-can-eat buffet. Sometimes I don't even remember the buffet bit. All I remember is picking up a plate and I'll wake up six hours later covered in rice and sauce. <laughs> and I can't theme a buffet. I can't theme a buffet either. I won't pick up a plate and go, oh, I'll have some rice, I'll have some curry. Well done, Ed, you've made yourself an Indian meal. <laughs> <laughs> won't do that. I'll get a plate, I'll get a spoon and I'll run along the full line of trays <laughs> just scraping food from every nation onto it until I've got some sort of plate pangea. <laughs> just an unidentifiable mass, just Spanish food, Japanese food, Chinese food, Indian food, coffee, sushi, just horrible. <laughs> just wedge my face into it, everyone going, is that man all right? Don't look at me! <laughs> I'm having a buffet! <laughs> from all over the world. My body for ten days had no idea where I was on this planet. <laughs> I went for a shit three days in, a UN flag came out. <laughs> well done. Get on, Come on back. 